Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. This is episode 159, and we're in the middle of Ultimate Week. And today is no exception. We got a really great episode today, so I hope you guys like what I did. But before we get into it, I just want to remind you that today, Venom number one, the new Venom number one comic comes out by Donnie Cates and Ryan Stegman. It's at your local comic book store right now, so make sure you go get it. I am dead broke, so I cannot get it till the weekend. I'll get paid on Friday, so I promise you at the end of Ultimate Week, probably Saturday morning, I'll post my review of Venom number one. I promise you guys that. So for now, we're just going to stick to the Ultimate books. Today, we're actually departing from the books just to tell the story of the video game. So the Ultimate Spider-Man video game, when it came out in the early, uh, I think it was like mid-2000s, I had it on the GameCube, and that's what I really liked playing it on, even though there was other versions, PS2 and stuff like that, um, but I really liked the GameCube version. Even though I played that the PS2 one and the PC one, um, I had multiple copies of this game because I really, really liked it, and I really loved playing it. And it has a great story, and I think it, to me, it's, it represents the best, you know, of the Ultimate Universe, in my opinion. Like, I know a lot of people out there, some of you guys have commented in the previous videos that you haven't really liked the takes on Venom and Carnage. Uh, but for me, I think this storyline worked. It summarizes it pretty well, and it has a clear beginning, middle, and end. And it sets up Venom into the in, in a direction that we at least recognize him in visually, where he actually has the spider on his chest. So we're going to go through, actually, a bunch of the cutscenes. Not all of them, but I cut together, like, about 30 minutes. I took a bunch of the cutscenes from the video game and cut together like a 30 minute version of it, just focusing on the main parts of the storyline. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch it and while it's playing, I'm gonna do commentary over it and just kind of, you know, give you my thoughts. Uh, but I wanna, you know, present this to you guys the best I can. So I'm gonna do a new format, kind of like what I do on the Venom stream. And you'll see the video with like a little bar underneath it and then the episode thing on the side and some background art. And you'll just hear my voice talking over it. Um, but you'll, you'll still hear the audio of the game as well. And if you guys really want me to just post just the raw footage of the game without my voice over it uh, so you can watch it let me know as well and i will definitely do that i'll probably get copyright strikes and all that against it but it doesn't matter my channel's not monetized yet anyway and they said my review could take as long as the end of june before I'm monetized. So it looks like we're gonna be starting that Patreon pretty soon. So I'll give you guys a heads up on that when it starts. But for now, no more wasting time. Uh, I wanna give you guys this presentation and I wanna watch this with you guys. So let's get to it. This all right, here we go, game. chapter one. So I'm not gonna talk too much here because this is like the retelling the origin of Ultimate Spider-Man. A few months ago, I reunited with my childhood friend, Eddie Brock. They do a really good job summarizing their origin together, though. It's our inheritance. Eddie's dad and my dad worked together. The Venom died. Project. <laughs> the suit may be the final step. Finally, a cure for cancer. People are dying. I like how they do these cutscenes, too, with, like, the panels and the... The movement, it's its really awesome. Like, everything's constantly moving and flowing. So here we go. We get to meet Bolivar Trask. I believe for the... Maybe not the first time. I think he might have popped up in the comics before this, but but maybe just briefly. But in the main universe, Bolivar Trask created the Sentinel program. But in this, obviously, as we talked about before, he's uh, the one Peter and Eddie Brock's dad worked for. To create this suit. I felt good. So here we go, black costume Spider-Man with the spider on his chest, and that is a setup for the payoff that we're gonna get at the end of this storyline. Ah, what's happening to me? Get this off of me! So they took out the mugger here because in the comics, Peter turned into a monster fighting a mugger. But I have super spider You know, they're simplifying, obviously. So I don't think anyone could ever hope to. But when Eddie found out what I had done, dun, dun, dun. he was, well, he was pretty angry. Yeah, pretty angry is putting it lightly. And that's, I think that's straight up a panel from the comic book, actually. You can hear the, the Venom voice there. And the, yeah, I did cut out some of the battle sequences, um, so I would just focus on the gameplay. So I did, I did chop this up a bit. Oh man, Venom looks awesome. And I think one of you guys said in the comments that the purple isn't just a lighting effect, but that there is actually a purpose for it. And I can't remember what the comment was, I think it was something like it's an outer shell 
that acts as a resistance to, I don't know, the environment or something. Um, and you couldn't remember where you read that from. So if anyone out there knows where that information came from or if that's true, let me know down in the comments. And then here we go. So this is the end of the graphic novel. Um, you know, we saw the fight uh, from the comics. You actually see the fight from the comics where he's fighting in the football field with Eddie at the. So we talked about that two episodes ago. Um, and then Eddie just kind of disappears. He gets like blown up and disappears. But now they're adding a new element here, which is Adrian Toomes, the Vulture, you know, played by Michael Keaton. Obviously, in the uh, recent Homecoming Spider-Man movie. Passed. So in this version, I don't he's even know how I'm working for alive. Trask, and he's kind of there when the suit was created, working so with um, Peter's dad and Eddie's dad. And then boom, three months later, after the disappearance of Venom, here he is uh, feeding off people in the park. And that is going to come back later in the next storyline we talk about, which is called War of the Symbiotes. Alright, now Peter's starting to talk about headaches and like extreme headaches that, that, was odd. that come and go really maybe quickly. I just need to take a couple days and here's off. our first hint at maybe for why days. he gets the headaches. Maybe actually do something that doesn't involve, I don't know, people trying to kill me. And boom, there it is, Eddie Brock. All right, we're outside this museum, I think. It says meanwhile, even though this takes place <laughs> like hours later because Peter was in the daytime and now it looks like it's nighttime. It's some kind of... That's but I, I love these shots. I like the way they use the silhouettes. And Where's the like suit? Activision did a really great job on this. And here we get our introduction the of Silver suit. Sable. The so obviously they're the Sony's suit. planning a movie with this character, Silver Sable and Black Cat. And uh, when you see her role in this, you can see Where's maybe what direction they might take her in a shared universe Boys? with Venom. She could be a mercenary uh, with her team, the Wild Pack, who is hunting the symbiote for the government. Um, so that's kind of her role in this game. Uh, but in this game, I think she's hired by Trask to get the suit, not the government. Uh, so maybe she'll work for a private, um, you know, firm in the shared universe version. I'm thinking she might get hired to take down Black Cat because Black Cat steals something okay? and they decide to partner up. And then maybe uh, they find out something me. like Venom exists and then they, you know, so hard. they go I snooping around to see what nuts. Venom's all about. You, you might need to get somewhere safe. All right, so once again, we're in the daytime, even though we were just at nighttime. <laughs> and uh, Peter, is his head's getting worse. And you see now that it's Eddie. Eddie can sense where Peter is because of the suit that's in him. It, it knows where Peter is uh, because Peter injected, you know, a version of the suit. He had a, a costume at one point, and there's still cells in his body uh, that are from the suit. Uh, and so the aliens, uh, not the alien symbiote, but this suit that Eddie Brock is wearing, Eddie? It knows where oh to find God. Eddie because it can you, detect his what's in his blood. And every time it gets close, it's, uh, it's sending Peter's spider sense into overdrive. So in the main Marvel Universe, Peter's spider sense is not activated by Venom. But here, oh it goes like, My it's like spider sense times just, ten. Just and it's like literally causing him massive headaches. Don't make me hurt you, Eddie. I'm totally serious. <laughs> I like the voice actor for Peter. <laughs> He's, he sounds like a kid. And Bendis is, this is where Bendis' dialogue sometimes works when it's read out loud by actors. Um, because it's Brock. like, I'm totally serious, Eddie, I'll knock you out. It's like, it comes across way more comical than in the comics where it just comes across as sometimes frustrating the way he writes dialogue. Sometimes. And then here, this is my favorite part. The Wild Pack, they all have, like, uh, like, ro like long rods to, like, electrocute Venom with. But Silver Sable has this gun that takes Take him down, down in one shot. I'm kind of like, why don't you give the whole team that gun? <laughs> like, don't you want to catch this dude? Um, so, yeah, they really treat hey, the fodder like fodder this? In, this, in this universe. Nothing that concerns you. My bruised ribs make you different. Um... Yeah. Yeah. Okay then. Sure. I'll just stay here and um. Oh. Ah, oh, nuts. So here we cut to Queens, and we're at fathers, Peter's house. But it used my and this is where DNA we start to learn that what's so in his DNA, like what's currently in his you? DNA after bonding no. with the suit once. Well, 
Yeah. In a creepy way. Yeah. <laughs> when I got you can hear the train in the museum, background. That's pretty cool. It felt like my brain was going to crawl out of my face. Ew. Uh. Ew, again. Sorry. Oh. Do you know what you're doing? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, check this out. I love the silhouette shots. So those are, look what really cool. It? I... I have no idea. And I, like I said, I think Bendis did co-write this game, thinks? so he probably worked on some yeah, of the dialogue. He probably did work no on the story idea, structure. Edward. But um, Edward, wake up. Whoever else worked on this, like they, they really fine-tuned this story Edward, and they made it very focused, which I like. Up. So here we go. Eddie Brock's about to meet Bolivar Trask, the man who possibly am I? caused the death of his your parents. Home, you know, Edward. maybe. This is where. And his assistant, Adrian born. Toomes. I know you. Bolivar Trask, this is my associate, Dr. Adrian Toombs. I did my graduate work with your father's lab. I, I was there when he and Dr. Parker... Let's get down to business, shall we, Edward? The Venom suit is worth billions of dollars. I love how Trask contracts. is like, dude, we wish to shut up. Suit, it, it, I want... It's too much for anyone to control. It will kill you if we leave you in there alone. When the suit consumes yeah. you, we will find someone else to test it. So it's a, this is a neat revelation. So the suit has to feed. And if it doesn't get an external right. host to feed off of, it will start feeding on its, its host if it's not game. Peter Parker or blood of Richard it. Parker. Oh, it's worth so, uh, this thing. so they're like, look, dude, that suit's going to eat you eventually. So let us run some tests on it. Let's try to get right, rocky. And then, you know, no, you can, you can tell us what we need to know to figure it out or whatever. Um, vulnerable to electricity. So they this set up this fun. test with Electro here. Uh, Bring it. I know he doesn't look much like Jamie Foxx, but uh, <laughs> it's just the character Jamie Foxx played in Amazing Spider-Man 2. And boom. So they purposely released Venom. I, I never wonder why they didn't do this test in a controlled environment. They do it out in the middle of the city. And the reason I showed that piece of gameplay there is because I wanted to show how Venom moved around. Because a lot of people are like, how's he going to move in the new movie if he can't web swing? If there's no Spider-Man, he's not going to web swing. And it's like, well, in this version, he, like, leaps. And he, like, shoves his claws into the side of buildings and climbs up that way. So he's, like, more monstrous. But he does stick. As you can see, he does is kind of sticking to walls, too. Um, Here wow. I am, you freak! Come on! Let's do this! And I think I cut this battle. I edited on, this battle down because Electro me, actually say, powers up are you fighting another and on turns the blue. I thought you and me had something <laughs> but I can't remember if I cut that scene I or not. It's Daredevil, isn't it? Um, what is he I guess we'll find out. Off, I love that joke, though. He's like, are you fighting other superheroes? Are you fighting Daredevil? I did it's it. like, come on, man. I finally <laughs> got that little yutz. All right. Let's that line there, the, I finally got that yutz. With uh, Yiddish, I guess. Um, that's definitely a Bendis thing. He he had a lot of characters use uh, Yiddish, <laughs> I guess, in his in his stories and his dialogue, especially in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. But then here you see uh, Shield coming down to save Peter. Because although the Shield agents here, they're dressed. I know this is the Ultimate Universe, and they kind of look comic accurate, but they look very much like Hydra agents. <laughs> Which, if you're a fan of, you know. Captain America Winter Soldier, like, obviously they, some of them are Hydra agents, but I, I love this. Nick Fury's like, dude, I ain't afraid of you. You're just a giant monster. But like I said, Nick Fury, he has a soft spot for Peter in this universe. And he's kind of a father figure in a way. A stern father figure, for sure. A tough love father figure. But one nonetheless. Yep. <laughs> Nick's like, hey, whatever, man. Get up, Pete. Uh, that bell billboard back there with the redhead, that's not Mary Jane. But, uh, <laughs> it probably would be if we were in the 616, if they were in the main Marvel universe, which is called the, the 616 universe. Um, because she's like a model and actress and everything in that world. But here she's still a 15-year-old kid with Peter, so... Um... I think once I was playing through this with a friend, and they're like, hey, is that Mary Jane? And I was like, uh, no, no, dude, it's not Mary Jane. Uh, so this scene, I almost cut this. Uh, the reason why I kept it in is because it sets up a new villain, uh, which we're getting our first look at. This is our first time seeing this character in the Ultimate comic books, uh, or in the Ultimate Universe, which is uh, the Beetle. 
the Beatles a, a really great D-list villain from the main Marvel Universe, but in this one he's pretty advanced. Um, and he breaks into a S.H.I.E.L.D. ship to uh, free the Green Goblin here. So in the in the Ultimate Universe, the Green Goblin, he's like a... The Norman Osborn injected himself with like basic, like a base level version of the Super Soldier Serum that made Captain America, and he injected other things on top of it uh, called the Oz Serum and other things. So that's why he's a big Hulk monster. Um, and, uh, and so basically he gets broken out of this ship by the Beetle for unknown reasons right now. We'll find out a little bit more later of why that is. But they, I think they retcon this in the comic book when we talk about War of the Symbiotes. I think they change it from from this battle to the Triskelion or something like that. Um, or maybe there's another thing that happens in the Triskelion that busts... Green Goblin out, and I can't remember, but like, whatever in the in the comic of War of the Symbiotes, which you know I'll reread and we'll do the review on that uh, on Thursday. But uh, in that one, I think I think Green Goblin like breaks out and he sees Gwen Stacy, and so you find out she's still alive, and that's how you find out she's still alive. Um, so I think that was something they saved for the comic and they didn't do in this game. So I so I think there was a small retcon there. Or it could be two different hey. events of Green Goblin breaking out. Who knows? I, I, you get the cool suit? I love this scene here. And by cool, I mean cumbersome and riven. <laughs> Don't take it too hard. I mean, I like clearly, that design. You can see, I'm kind of Where he's like floating outside the panels. Style. I love that. And Peter, to me, he doesn't come across as like a, nice like a jerk. Like, I remember in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, he, he laid on the insults a little too thick. And I was like, ah, it's, all right, dude, you're borderline bullying now. Uh... And I know that's one interpretation of Peter, but I would just always saw it as he had, like, kind of dad jokes as, like, a 15-year-old. That's how I always took him, is that he had, like, the sense of humor as maybe of, like, Uncle Ben would, you know? Um, but here you see he broke out Green Goblin, and now he's collecting a sample of the Sandman. Um, hey, so he's he's working on something before, very top secret. I'm starting to think you need a good old and we'll kind of find out who he's working for very soon, although I believe the story goes nowhere in the comics. Like, I don't think they ever touch on it. Uh, it's clear that Bendis had big plans for this character and, and other things to do with this character. You. And then just Uncle never did them. Uh, really? Oh, I and I don't, I don't know why. Maybe just time or maybe because he wanted to shake things up and bring Miles Morales in and got focused on that idea. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know Where'd why this go? never paid off. Where did he go? Because I, I think no, it's a seriously. cool setup for a story. And we'll get into what that is as we as we move through this. Well, that just figures. <laughs> hey, I know you get this all the time, but any of you see a big scary robot guy with a backpack? Over there. Latvian uh, embassy. That's just Yeah, so the Latvian embassy. Is there um that's where Cedar went. And Spider-Man. And, uh, we'll, like, you know, so Latveria is where Doctor Doom is from in the comic books. And in the Ultimate Comics, I think he does have roots at, in Latveria. So obviously Doctor Doom is possibly involved with what's going on with the Beetle. And then here we get, you know, Adrian Toome says, you know, we sent you out in the field to fight Electro. And to learn the limits of your suit, maybe have him electrocuted off you because we know electricity hurts you. Because Adrian Toomes was there when he was electrocuted the first time. Uh, but now it seems like the suit was built he's, with Richard Parker's so DNA, check this out. and his son is Spider-Man. Well, just like that, the villain now knows Peter Parker's Spider-Man. And getting close to him is giving Brock. So he's he found out that suit. whenever Eddie's Get near Brock Spider-Man or Peter, everything. that he he senses something in him. So that's where we get that reveal. His name is Peter Parker. He lives with his aunt in Queens. He's still in high school. And so now they're doing another field test, <laughs> which just seems so dangerous, um, where they're having Silver Sable taking Venom to uh, Peter Parker to see how he would react. And of course, Eddie's like, nope, you guys let me out, and I want to go take Peter for myself. Yeah. This seems great. Just one-on-one -on -one with Silver Sable. So hopefully if they do a shared movie universe, we get to see something like this. <laughs> she, she's tough too, man. Look at this. Oh, I love that. Oh, right through his head. Like, that's a brutal fight, man. And then he absorbs her. 
Uh, and he's trying to drain her, but... Yeah, she ain't having that shit. <laughs> I don't even know why she didn't have backup on her. Why was she alone? It's like these guys want Venom to get away from them every time. Rip it apart. We'll return what is left to crash. Yeah, so she ain't messing around now. She's like, this thing tried to kill me numerous times. I'm done with it. Like, I want it dead now. I love that. Jumping out of the comic panel. That's so cool. So cool. I like the sound effects. Yeah. The camera work here is just really great. It's very, very fun and cinematic. And Intense. So check that out. See if you have the extra legs coming out of them. And he's like a jumping spider. Look at these choppers. They ain't nothing, yo. So here's the last ship coming in to get him. And boom. Venom does not want them to get Peter. He wants Peter for himself. He needs the feet on Peter to gain control of the suit. And so that's what we've learned over these past few scenes with him. We may have lost Eddie Brock, but we've still got Peter Parker. And now she knows Peter Spider-Man. Great. Is for real? Told you. Superhero. All right. So this is in the comics. Like Bendis put a lot of these scenes in uh, with you know in here with like Peter talking to Mary Jane and her helping him with stuff. And I actually really like that because Mary Jane, I grew up you know with in the eighties and nineties, and I would say in the late eighties and throughout the nineties, Mary Jane was a very uh, aggravating character because a lot of the writers, it was clear they didn't want Peter Parker to be married anymore in the comics. They and it's clear that they thought that him being married was a mistake. So they just they wrote Mary Jane in a way that made you hate her. And I really feel bad because characters deserve better than that. I never understood why there are people out there in the industry who hate specific characters, and then when they write them, just just destroy them in a lot of ways. Like I know, like Dan DiDio, there's like this famous story that Dan DiDio hates Nightwing at DC Comics, and he always tries to get people to kill Nightwing, and no one seems to do it. Like they don't, no one wants to do it because Nightwing's awesome, and his death would mean a lot, but only if you keep him dead. Uh, and in comics, everyone comes back, so I think a lot of writers are just like, dude, we're we're not doing that. Uh, but no one stopped a lot of the guys in the '90s from writing horrible Mary Jane, Thanks, and uh, that's a bummer, because I think the character deserves more General, than that. Do you think he'll behave? Knowing Peter um, I will say, and the one, some of the credit I'll give to Dan Slott is that he made me like Mary Jane in some of the comics, especially Spider I Island. I liked her a lot in that. Uh, so here we go, you saw Nick Fury, like, 18 and over. we get a reimagined version of that scene in the comics in War of the Symbiotes, where Nick Fury says, hey, kid, stay away from Latveria. And uh, Peter's like, fine. And then Nick's like, yeah, I told him that because obviously I know by telling him to stay away, he'll go get involved. Ah, great. Uh, and so Nick Fury, that's how he kind of played Peter. He was like, all right, there's this kid with powers. I can't take any control of him because he's under 18. So he can't work for the government. He can't do anything. So in order to get Spider-Man to do what Nick Fury wanted Aww, to do, he, he would go and do something like that. Like, hey, happens. don't go do this. this and then of course Peter would be like, oh, I'm going to go do it. He's a kid. <laughs> And he, <laughs> he doesn't seem to listen sometimes. But also because he thinks he can help. And, and Nick Fury also knows he can help. This needs to stop, right? Ah! But yeah, we get a fight here with... I kept this in. I was going to edit this out because it's not really involved with Venom. But it does tie into the Beatles storyline. And the Beatles stuff is what we're going to talk about in War of the Symbiotes. We're going to get a lot more Beatle action. So, um, so that's why I kept these scenes in. Originally, I was going to cut them out because I did cut out the Wolverine Venom fight. I know some of you guys are like, hey, where's the scene where Venom fights Wolverine? Uh, I cut it out because it, it really didn't add to the overall story too much. You just get to see a cool moment where he fights Venom. And plus, since I cut all the, the actual gameplay footage out 
of this. Um, I want a genetic suppressor you didn't really see much, so I, I decided to get this area you know, sealed off inside of ten seconds. So or please don't be mad at me. First son of a you with fury. Hmm, good job here. Okay. Could you have made a bigger mess? No, <laughs> and believe me, I tried. Mm, you've got some <laughs> mouth on you. Wow, you think you'd be a teeny bit nicer I considering this. I just did your job for nice. you. Nice. Meanwhile. <laughs> I require a sample. Yeah, so Beetle's not messing around. He, he's been collecting samples of different Spider Man villains. He let Goblin out, but he collected a sample of him. He has a sample of Sandman, and now he wants some of them. And the Venom made short work of him. Again, I had to cut out all the fight sequences uh, just for time and stuff. Otherwise, this would have been like a three hour video. So, if you guys ever want, check out a, you know, go on YouTube and look for gameplay playthroughs of this game and see the whole game. And it, it's a lot of fun. Oh, so here we go. She, she sneaks up on Peter Parker, hits him with a trank dart, and he's out. Ah, uh, what happened? Wakey, wakey. Oh, my head. Ow. <laughs> uh, who are you? There's enough tranquilizer in your I love how that first trank took him down, but that the second one there like it. barely phased him. Um, but yeah, as you can see, she's like, she's like, don't move. The trank inside you is, could knock out a rhino, and he's like, I don't care. I know. I need to get are, out of here. Parker. I can get at you and anyone else you know. Mary Jane Watson, Ooh. Nate Parker. Leave don't play the family, family card, lady. Alone. Get in the damn car. <laughs> nope. He makes short work of her. I always like uh, Bendis, like I said, he did really great stuff with Mary Jane, making her a character. Like, she wasn't useless, and she wasn't, like, whiny. And even though she was scared that Peter was Spider-Man, like she kind of was in the 90s comics that I grew up with, she she was involved, and she was more a part of his stories, which I, I give Bendis a lot of credit for that. Uh, because, like I said, the character deserves more than just, you know, being the... The person who whines about Spider-Man being or Peter being Spider-Man. I've been hired to capture you, um, not to kill him. But uh, oh, yeah, so he, he, did, he did a good job with that. So I like that the, there were scenes in the game that featured that too. And then here you see Silver Sable. She has a little bit of a heart. She's not out to kill okay, innocent people. She the... just is hired to take down Spider-Man. What is wrong with you? <laughs> oh snap! <laughs> Oh, you see when he drags her there? I think her head bounces off the ground. You're just gonna stand there? Thinking about it. <laughs> I just love the honesty. And yeah, I know, he changed right for that guy, and that guy could probably pick Peter Parker out of a lineup. But that I always liked that in Spider-Man 2, the Sam Raimi one, where a bunch of people saw him without his mask. Are we and done? And at the Eddie? end of the day, people weren't crappy about it. They were just like, you know what? Oh, you saved our lives. I didn't know how much um, longer I was going to. So sometimes I just excuse it that way. I'm like, eh. New Yorkers love Peter Parker. They love Spider-Man for the most part. But I like that the Trank finally set in. And then here's Silver Sable waking up and her job's been done for her. <laughs> no! Alright, so now we're in this facility where what was that? where Bra uh, uh, I'm sorry, Trask Earlier said this is where the suit was created by Richard Parker and Eddie Brock Sr. So kind of Eddie going home and then boom, check out this reveal. I thought that was awesome. Um Ultimate Carnage. And of course you're like, holy crap, Gwen Stacy. But then boom, he just reveals that he can sense who's under there and it's Peter Parker. So yeah, so here's where you're gonna see how I kind of in a half explained way. How Peter gets turned into Carnage, but in the comic, you know, we saw it was it, it like absorbed Gwen Stacy, and it had like the, it looked like Peter, and there's a reason for that uh, with the Richard DNA and stuff. You know, Tombs is asking him, "Did you ever wear the suit?" And Peter's like, "Yeah, for a few hours." It's amazing you survived any encounter with Eddie Brock at all. The microscopic suit particles in you want to join with the suit Brock wears. Yeah. Fascinating. So the, the, the cells that are still in Peter from the time he wore the suit, they want to bond with 
Venom suit or Eddie suit, uh, and, and only in doing so will it give Eddie complete control over his suit, uh, and it'll make him stop wanting to feed or needing to feed all the time, um, I believe. But then, yeah, whatever he injected Peter with, it activated those cells and turned him into Carnage. So there's actually a great fight here where you fight as Venom fight Carnage. But then here we go, big reveal. You saw the black costume in the beginning with Peter wearing it, and he had the spider on his chest. Now that the suit has absorbed the Carnage symbiote, uh, he's in yes. control. Yes. I like that look too, that design where the mouth Eddie, is open around on? his face. I have absolutely total Oh man. Control. And then boom, right there, spider on his chest. So he is officially the Venom we all know and love now. Or mostly. <laughs> as close to him as we can get. But now he wants to go find Bolivar Trask. Oh. I love it. Uh, so yeah, Trask is now hiding in his office. He knows there's creatures that are loose. Um, but Peter just wants answers, man. He wants, he wants to know if his dad was murdered. My father. Everything you could ever want to know about your parents is right here. And we're actually going to find out something in that file. We're going to find out something about Peter's parents and mother. Um, which is really heartbreaking, actually. And then out he goes. I actually think this scene is great, because normally you always see those scenes in movies where the bad guy just gets in a helicopter and flies away. You uh. again? <laughs> Down, boy. My contract with Trask expired ten minutes ago. And if you're chasing him, don't worry. He doesn't know how to fly that helicopter. I love that. That's a nice subversion of expectations, where you're like, oh, he's going to fly away and there's going to be... The, eh, the no helicopter's going to crash and Peter's not going to get answers, business, so you huh? feel like you can predict it. But then Silver Sable's like, hey, my contract's over. And don't worry, he can't fly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's this great battle where you have to, like, prevent Venom from getting to trap, which is so Spider-Man. I always like those stories where Peter has to stop one bad guy from killing another bad guy or, or killing someone else who has just done bad, you know, but uh, doesn't deserve to die or something, you know. Uh, so, yeah. So I like that, and then we it get our over. our ending here. Now I can learn everything that Trask knew about what happened ten years ago. Yeah, so we're getting a little flashback story of Peter's parents now at Trask Industries, Burn it. or at least his we'll dad. Start new. Peter, I have all these things in my head. Things yeah, so you see say. that they were supposed to destroy the samples, but Eddie Brock Senior kept some around. You're going to find that there are people in this world, people who you are going to look at and say, There's Dr. Why Connors? is this person like this? I find myself surrounded by people who will do or say anything just for the appearance that they are better than they are. There were three survivors of the crash. They all reported seeing the same thing. One of the witnesses was my mother. She yeah. died in the ambulance. Ugh. Peter? So his mom actually survived the plane crash, Eddie but she died it's in the ambulance parents. on the way to the hospital. Like, how here. heartbreaking is that? Before we showed up. Um, we'll find him. We always do. And then, yeah, now we found out that Eddie Brock's missing, S.H.I.E.L.D. couldn't find him, and Trask went to prison uh, for his crimes. Trask. But, uh, I have been you know Venom, he doesn't believe in that kind Eddie, of justice. He believes I in street justice. Believe. You know what I can't believe? I can't believe that after all the things you did, all the things you made me do, that after all of that, all you got was three years in a golf course prison. Oh, man. You can't do anything to me in here. <laughs> the guards, they are. Well -armed. Oh, well, he's like, the guards, he's like, you they're not well armed enough. I wouldn't, I wouldn't and then here we got another great Mary Jane ramble. and Peter scene. Okay. Um, I would say this game is, to me, it's the best you. of the Ultimate I'm Universe. Not. It's got great just, scenes in it, what? tells a great story. Uh, compared to all the other Ultimate exactly. versions of comics, uh, this I don't know stuff, of I think this is the peak. I, the early comics were really good, but in the later comics they got really weak to me until Miles came around. But this, to me, is the, the peak. It's, it's the highlight of the Ultimate Universe for me. And then you get this like Dark Knight, you know, Batman animated series type where Eddie is on a gargoyle and he jumps off into the rain. <laughs> and actually, at this point of the game, after you beat it, you can play. You can just run around no. the city as Venom now, 
uh, now that you got control of the suit. And you can just play Free World as Spider-Man or Venom and go around and do side missions. It's a lot of fun. All right, so that's it. Thank you guys for watching this. Let me know what you think of all this down below. And like I said, if you want me to upload just a version where I'm not talking and I just have like the full, you know, video up, uh, let me know. I'll probably still keep like the little, you know, Seek and Destroy logos and things like that. Uh, but if you guys would rather have a version where I'm not talking over it, uh, I will upload that for you guys as well so you can see that all in its entirety. Um, I, I just appreciate you guys uh, hanging in here with me. I, I know it's I needed a little bit more time to edit this, so that's why I didn't go up immediately. Uh, but uh, but I am you know trying to stay stay on top of all this stuff. And if you guys are out there waiting for my Venom number one review, like I said, we will get to that on Saturday um, once I have enough money to go to the comic book store. Uh, but for this, you know, this to me, like I said, is the peak of the Ultimate Universe. This is the story I like the most out of all the Venom stuff in the Ultimate Universe. Although the Miles one was pretty good minus like a few minor details and we'll talk about that on friday uh, but war of the symbiotes what we're going to see is uh you're going to you'll probably go back and forth between these two episodes because there's stuff in war of the symbiotes that kind of retcon certain things in this but it's kind of a story like it's a weird story because it's structured in a way to where it's a prequel uh, a story that takes place at the same time and a sequel to this video game and that's kind of what war of the symbiotes is it kind of bridges in these holes and tries to retell the story of the game but in a condensed form and it doesn't work i mean like once again bendis tried to do it all in like six issues and it's like dude take your time like just make it 12 issues and retell the story of the video game uh but at the same time i'm like but why do that like you're defeating the you know the purpose of the video game is to get people to go play it um but i know a lot of people you know comic fans might not go play the game and they might have wanted the story for themselves so to me i would have released like an original graphic novel like separate and that way people could have read that and then picked up war of the symbiotes and it could have just been a sequel storyline uh but so it gets a little kind of messy but we'll talk about that you know in that in the next episode uh, but for today again let me know what you think of all this down below if you have any favorite moments of this let me know please don't be mad at me for cutting out the wolverine fight there's a lot of scenes in this game i cut out and i just try to do it for time to try to keep this under 40 minutes if possible so hopefully i did that uh, but thank you guys as always for watching like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace